Hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Wales. I'm a developer programs engineer on the Google Analytics team. Uh, today, we're launching actually a brand new uh, developer live series from Google Analytics called Behind the Code. Um, and actually, on this series, we're not only going to showcase some new uh, GA features and technology, uh, but also give you a chance to hear directly from some of the uh, engineers, product managers, um, and others on the GA team who are behind the scenes um, designing, building, and ultimately delivering this technology to you. Um, so for today's inaugural episode, um, we're going to be talking about Google Mobile App Analytics. Um, recently, we launched uh, brand new reports um, and also version 2 of the uh, Android and iOS SDKs. Um, both of these are just recently out in um, public beta, so anyone can go use them. And to help me talk about Google Mobile App Analytics, um, we have with me uh, Jim Cotugno, who is a uh, software engineer working, uh, a, a driving force behind the mobile SDKs. Um, so, Jim, it's good to have you here. Well, thanks, Andrew. Thanks for joining us on us on our first episode. You're a brave <laughs> man. Um, so, just to start and jump right into it, can you tell us just a little bit about um, what your role is on the Google Analytics team and how long you've been working with mobile app analytics? Sure. So, um, uh, I'm responsible for the mobile app uh, analytics SDKs, iOS and Android. Um, I've been working on them since uh, December of 2010. Uh, and um, since that time, we've enhanced the, the V1 SDKs, what I call the V1 SDKs. And also, we started looking at what uh, app users or app developers really needed for uh, analytics. And uh, the product of that effort is uh, what you see today with the App Analytics Beta. Cool. cool. So for developers who maybe were using um, V1 since way back when you were first working on it, um, what's sort of like the high level, what's new that they should know in a nutshell that's kind of new and exciting? Well, I, I think the, the biggest thing that's new is that we have a, a whole new set of reports which are focused on apps instead of websites. It, those of you who are using the V1 SDKs know that um, you're reporting to basically a web analytics uh, uh, reporting framework. Um, but with the V2 SDK, we have uh, app-specific reports that uh, app developers want to see. Um, okay. The other thing. Uh, the other thing that uh, the SDKs bring, the V2 SDKs bring to you, is that uh, they're more streamlined, so they're hopefully uh, less intrusive on your application, and also they're easier to use. Uh, um, and and uh, I guess the final feature uh, is that you have you have access to the whole suite of, of Google Analytics features, not just a small subset of like right, you did right. before. So cool, and I think yeah. I've got. A ton of questions for you okay. about all the stuff that's new. Um, but before doing that, I kind of wanted to just step back, and, and maybe for some uh, developers out there who aren't yet using analytics uh, in their app, um, can you just give us like a brief, you know, if you're not already using some kind of analytics package in your app, why, why do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a good, good idea because uh, you, you build an app and you want people to use it, but uh, uh, you really don't have any idea of how they're using it or why. So analytics brings that to you so you can kind of see what features of your application users like, what features they don't like. You can see where your application is popular. Um, and one, in my previous slides, one of the things we wanted to know is which countries uh, were people buying our app from. And then we would actually put the effort into internationalize or, or localize the application based on the countries that were popular. Um, so that's something you can use analytics to find out. Um, uh, you could find out uh, if if your app is uh, uh, is funded through like advertising. You can use uh, analytics to track you know how successful your app is uh, in terms of advertising dollars. How much money are you making? That kind of thing. Pretty key for a yes. lot of developers. Um, and for developers who maybe have used our JavaScript libraries on the web, um, but haven't yet tried native app tracking on Android or iOS, what's the so what are the, how similar is it to doing an implementation on Android or iOS? So uh, obviously apps and, and websites are different, but uh, where possible we tried to keep uh, the two in sync. So you have the concept of a tracker uh, on, the, on the web analytics, and you also have that uh, in Apple Analytics as well. Um, and you have the, the types of beacons or hits that you can send is very similar between the two. You have events, you have uh, user timings, you have social, you have e-commerce. Um, and for apps, you have something called uh, views or screen views, which are very similar to page views. And so 
a lot of the concepts are, are the same. Now, uh, as far as apps go, uh, a couple key differences. Uh, the first one is apps may not uh, may be running when you don't have an internet connection. So the important thing uh, there is that we have to kind of keep track of, of the activity in the app, but then hold it internally and send it later. Um, and so that presents a whole new dimension of things you have to think about as an app developer. How often do you want to send uh, that data? Um, you have to balance uh, um, sending it quickly versus trying to keep uh, be nice on battery usage and data usage for, for your app uh, uh, users. And I know that's something, I mean, that's something in the new SDKs that you can configure, how yes, often you yes. want to send. Yes, it's totally under your control. We try to give you reasonable defaults to start, uh, but you certainly can tune it uh, as you see fit. Cool, cool. Um, great, so I guess is there any reason you wouldn't want to use analytics in your app? I can't think of any. Good, that was a test. <laughs> and, and passed. I passed that one, huh? Yes, fantastic. <laughs> um, okay. So let's talk about what's been released today. Um, so I mentioned earlier that um, we've sort of launched this new reporting experience, and we have V2 of the SDKs, and those are in public beta. Um, and you've talked, I think, a, a little bit already about some of the new features. Um, but I wanted to kind of run through in detail. For those who haven't checked it out yet, um, maybe just go through and talk about some of the top new features, um, top new reports and data that you can get from using the new SDK. And I'll switch to some visuals, too. OK. Um. So as I said before, we want to, we wanted reports that uh, made sense for app developers and for applications, and so that's kind of our first uh, first key thing is to come up with a set of reports and, and the dimensions, the metric and metrics that support those reports. Obviously, um, so uh, for example, the first set of reports we we can provide for you is, is uh, activity on your users. And so we have a new users report, active users report. Um, the other thing that people always ask us is which devices are people uh, using uh, my apps on. And so we have reports that focus on uh, not only app, uh, the devices, but what operating systems. Uh, you know, there's several versions of Android out there. There's several versions of iOS out there. Um, and of course, every device has a different screen size, it seems, these days. So uh, screen resolution is also very important. And that, that kind of stuff could help you figure out where to prioritize your development time, right? If, right. You know, not everyone's using the latest version of the OS, it probably doesn't make sense to That's rely right. on those features. Right, right. exactly right. So, um, so yeah, what, what's engagement flow? So yeah, so this engagement flow report is really cool. You can see exactly how uh, your users flow through your application. Uh, which screens, so how do they get there, which screens do they uh, go through on their way, and, and if they, when they leave the application, you can see where they leave it. So um, if they're leaving it on a screen that you thought that they would just do as kind of like an interim step, then maybe you want to find out why they're leaving and uh, change your app so that uh, they, they stick with it longer. Right. Improving that user experience. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, exception tracking. This is something that's that's totally new. Yeah. So this is when we were looking at what app developers wanted to know about their application usage. Uh, crashes and exceptions was a big one. Uh, um, it, those of you uh, familiar with the like the uh, I have App Store and iTunes Connect, you get a few. Uh, you get you get like the top three heavy hitters in terms of where your app. Applications crashing, but not much more. They have no idea what, what kind of frequency those crashes are happening. Um, so, with the crash and exceptions report, we can you you can see all the crashes and exceptions that are happening in your application, and more more importantly, you can see how often they're happening. So, you can see if you know your top crash is happening one percent of the time, ten percent of the time. Are all your users affected, or just a very small portion? It's something I think is very powerful. And you can break that down by app version, right? So you can see. Well, certainly, yeah, certainly. A new version you released has suddenly many more crashes and exceptions. That's right. Too. That's right. Cool. Um, User-defined timings. I think this was this is around on the web too, but this is new for apps. Yeah, this is this is something we added for uh, for apps in in this new SDK, and um, I, I'm surprised in that this has adopt been adopted uh, pretty aggressively by app developers. So obviously, there's a need. Uh, for app developers to, to measure key timings in their applications. How long does it take for a screen to, to load? How long does a purchase uh, take to, to happen uh, in, in your app? Those kinds of things. And, and they, um, you can do that with the user timings that we have. That's cool. That's cool. 
Um, and this was one um, I know that's important to a lot of developers in terms of um, being able to see where their users are coming from from different marketing channels. So we've done we've had some attribution before, um, but we do have a new Google Play Sources report. Yeah, this this one has uh, got a lot of people really excited. So you can see uh, how effective your advertising is in driving users to your application using this Google Play Sources report. Um, it's very easy to set up, and um, you know, you can, as you can see there, you can get an idea of uh, uh, you know what your campaigns are doing in terms of generating revenue if, you, if you're using e-commerce in your application. Um, you can also see how many users are being brought to. Uh, to your app uh, from the various marketing campaigns you have there, and um, you can even go further and, and see what kind of activities they're using in your application. What, what are they doing with your app yeah. based yeah. on the campaign information? So all the a user's subsequent activity, um, how they use the app, and maybe any transactions they complete, those get attributed back to that original campaign. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. That's really cool. And to set this up, actually, in the SDK, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, just a few lines in your manifest, really. You're, for Android, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so that's sort of the highlight, um, I think, of a lot of the top features. Um, is there anything new from the SDK perspective? Like in terms of if someone was working with version 1 and they're switching to version 2, is there anything they should be aware of for oh. Android or iOS? Yeah, so um, it's easier and better for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there were three key things. Uh, obviously, we talked a lot about the, the app-specific reporting. Um, the other thing, uh, when I first started working with the SDKs, is I noticed that they were difficult to use. Um, got lots of questions on, you know, when do I call close and, and things like that. And in reality, you didn't have to call close at all ever. Um, so we rewrote the SDKs uh, to uh, to address that particular uh, issue um, of usability. Um, and the other thing that uh, noticed is that uh, the app SDKs. The original ones mm -hmm. um, would crash fairly frequently. So some of you probably went through that, and, um, and, and in the Android world, they also would uh, kind of really degrade the performance um, of your um, of your application itself. So you could see stutters or stalls, that kind of thing. So, um, so those are kind of the problems we wanted to address. Cool, cool. And that's actually a good segue because I wanted to. Um, you know, as part of sort of behind the code, not only talk about new features, but also sort of give people an insight into what you think about when you go back um, and you know go sort of the, to the drawing board and, and come up with new ideas and how you actually bring that um, to market. So, after you had done version one, I think you touched on a little bit already, but what were sort of the main drivers for you? Like, why why did the team decide to go back and take another look at doing app analytics? Uh, well, we wanted to address the problems of uh, the original SDKs in particular. Um, ease of use was probably the key uh, thing we wanted to tackle. And then, of course, we wanted to, we have a goal that the, the SDKs, no matter what they did, would never uh, crash the app or impact the app in a negative way. Right. So we tried very hard to insulate uh, applications from S SDK failures that may happen. Um, by doing a graceful degradation. So the SDK may decide to shut down uh, collecting data, but it won't crash the app if, if it runs into certain error conditions. Um, I, I talked about easy use. We wanted, we wanted you to be able to, to pick up the SDK and, and within five minutes have some, uh, some basic analytics available to you, basically five minutes worth of work. Uh, and that's kind of our goal to get you started. So you didn't have to kind of figure out exactly how to where to put your lines of code, and you know, you know, how do I write this analytics into this? So we tried to make it really easy to start. How do you think that? Do you feel like five minutes is that what developers need? Uh, well, I I think I think we're kind of in the ten minute range, but yeah, I th you know, it's I think it's an easy easy uh, easy to get going yeah. right out of the gates, yeah. and then um, as you want to get more uh, more sophisticated in your in your uh, analytics. Then of course it'll take a little bit more effort. So. Sure, there's a lot there to work with. And just yeah. if, if anybody's watching and wants to take a look at the getting started guide, um, you can see it is actually really simple. I, Jim says ten. I would I would put it closer to five, but um, <laughs> you can go check it out. It's at developers.google.com/analytics. Um, so I guess you know th th those were some of the goals you were looking at when you were redesigning the SDKs and sort of the reporting experience. Um, 
Were there any technical challenges that you ran into that, that were particularly difficult? S yeah, there were a couple that kind of made the project interesting. Uh, for Android in particular, we wanted to um, make sure all the Google Analytics activity was off the main UI thread. The um, mm -hmm. reason being is that uh, we do things like uh, connect to the network, we access the persistent store on your device. We wanted to make sure that we'd get out of the way so that the UI experience for the user wouldn't be uh, impacted at all by uh, the Analytics SDK. Uh, and that turned out to be pretty tricky um, because there's timing issues because when you're dealing with multi-thread environments, right, you, you kind of have to make sure everything can synchronize properly. And, and one of the key things that we have to do is we have to accept tracking uh, beacons before we're ready to send them. Um, so, right. so it was kind of that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> what about on uh, for iOS? Was there anything? Is it basically the same doing the SDK for iOS? Or is iOS is a little bit easier in terms of keeping stuff off the the UI thread because uh, the persistent store issues aren't anywhere near as uh, as difficult to handle. Um, uh, the one thing, though, in, in dealing with crash and exception reporting, uh, uh, iOS was uh, actually a little bit more difficult here because, uh, first off, there's several types of exceptions or crashes that you can encounter. You have NS exception, NS error. Um, and the other thing is uh, we're limited in the crash and exception handling uh, how much data we can send. So, uh, uh, and I guess this is also true for the Android, but we have to kind of pick what we think is the most relevant uh, part of the crash or the exception or the error and report that. And so that was kind of a challenge to, to work through and, and figure out what the best thing to do was. Yeah, yeah. I should say, though, I think from at least the way it turned out so far, um, tracking exceptions on iOS is actually uh, pretty straightforward. Oh, good. Thanks to the, the work that you put into it. But um, um, let me see. I guess, let's see. Well, one other question, maybe, just to follow up on that. I, I, we talked a little bit about it earlier. Um, but in terms of dispatching data, um, it's because it works a little bit differently from the web, right? So you're queuing up hits locally, and then you're going right. to dispatch them. Um, is there anything? It's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, developers can decide how often they want that to dispatch. And that works pretty simply across Android and iOS. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess the best way is to kind of go over it. So um, the idea is that uh, the hits obviously don't necessarily go out uh, right away um, because you might not have a network connection or you might uh, um, not want to use the network connection. Okay. So the app developer um, has control over that. Uh, uh, but, and so um, let me get my thoughts together here. So, so the idea is you have to look at your application, what it's doing, and then come up with a dispatch model that works best for you. So for example, if you're busy uh, connecting to the internet and uh, you know sending data back and forth, then it makes perfect sense to send your analytics data at the same time. Um, so you can certainly, you know, you can do what we call manual dispatch where you can call uh, call out to the SDK and say, okay, send what you got, let's go. Or if your application is in the background or if your application doesn't do any data uh, uh, you know, network connectivity stuff. You might want to, you know, be more sensitive to the user's network uh, data bandwidth and their battery, and send data. You know, every five, ten, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, whatever uh, makes sense in your case. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility. There's flexibility, and, and there's a, there's a bit of tension here because you have the need to kind of like not send the data all the time. Right in order to be a good citizen on the device, but then at the other hand, you need to get the data off the device as well so that it's fresh enough to be included into your reporting. Right, so finding that balance depending on right. your app. Yeah. Yes. And I guess, uh, what about sessions? Um, people might be familiar with how sessions work on the web. Just, I know this, we could probably talk about this for a while, but... <laughs> yeah, we could. Um, set, uh, sessions are configurable on in both SDKs, right? Right, right. so um, sessions, for those of you familiar with, with Google Analytics, sessions uh, are defined by 30 minutes of inactivity uh, for the web. Um, for uh, Universal Analytics, which is what uh, the V2 SDKs use, you could actually change that timeout value. But in general, for apps, uh, every, every app developer has a little bit different notion, but for apps in general, the time that the app spends in front of the user pretty much defines the session. So if I bring up a, an app, 
and uh, work with that app for three or four minutes and then go on to do something else, then the session length for that particular session should be three or four minutes, huh? right? Um, s some people, uh, some app developers wanted to not include uh, phone calls, for example. They uh, are a big problem because some app developers want phone calls to change the session, in, as it were. So if I get a phone call, then I want to end the session and start a new one. But then other app developers want to not end the session when they get a phone call. So they think they see a phone call as just a temporary interruption. They want to view the session as continuing after that call ends. But yes, the SDKs uh, give you all kinds of control over uh, when uh, when a session ends and when it starts and, and how long uh, the application can be in the background before you even start a new session. Cool, cool. So. And I should just make another plug that we do have um, developer guides that walk through um, how sessions work on Android and iOS and also how you can set them up to sort of work within the model that is your app. Um, so go check it out on developers. Uh, dot google dot com slash analytics. Yeah, Andrew did a lot of work on those guides. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jim did a lot of reviewing of those guides as well. Um, great. So I think we've talked a little bit about what's new um, and also kind of what went into it and some of the challenges right. you ran into. Um, there's a lot of power in these new SDKs. There's a lot of new data coming into some new reports that are hopefully going to be really tailored for app developers. Um, I wanted to just spend like, maybe like a couple minutes talking about what's next or what you think is going to be next for mobile app analytics. If you were to, or what, what can you tell us about where, where the SDKs are going and where the reporting experience is going? So uh, we're not done. I can <laughs> tell you that. We're going to do more. Uh, you know, we're defining uh, more reports that we want to add to the standard report mechanism. I, as an aside, I just want to let everyone know who's familiar with analytics on the web, Google Analytics. Uh, you have the ability to create your own custom reports, and that ability is, is also there uh, for app right. analytics as well. So, um, but new reports, but we're also uh, bringing going to bring in uh, more features that web analytics users have that uh, app analytics users don't have access to. Um, and let's see what else did I have on that. Um, and of course, we're always, you know, I mentioned this tension between uh, being a good citizen with uh, data usage and battery life versus getting your data off. And, and we're constantly looking at ways uh, to improve uh, the situation so you don't have to worry so much about it. So we want to get the data off faster but be nicer about it. Cool, cool. So, uh, and if you could pick uh, maybe one feature to just magically be included in the SDKs overnight without. Uh, no code reviews just popped in and it worked out. What what feature would that be? Oh, well, I'd be out of a job. Right? <laughs> uh, for me, uh, the most exciting thing I can think that we would love to be able to do is uh, is to do kind of what you can do in the web now. If you want to change your tracking or your analytics gathering, uh, it's pretty easy to do on the web in the sense that uh, you can just push out a new version of the uh, of your website and it's all there. Um, but I want to go even farther than that. I want to be able to, uh, in the app space, I want to be able to change my app's tracking uh, you know, collection uh, activities uh, remotely without having to uh, push uh, a new version of the app out there. So that, yeah. to me, would be kind of like the, the holy grail of, of uh, application analytics. So kind of changing the implementation on the fly without having to push something to Google Play. Right, or, right, you know, right. Yeah. Is that all hypothetical? <laughs> Oh, boy, I'd love to do something there. So yeah. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, cool. Well, thanks, you, thanks Jim, uh, no, for joining thanks. us on this Thank first you. Behind the Code. Um, I think now we can switch to maybe some questions. Um, we have a moderator page that's up. Uh, let me. And while you're getting that together, Andrew, uh, one of the questions came in over YouTube from Nick. Yeah. So this is probably for Jim, but both you can take it. And the question is, why would somebody use Analytics Mobile SDK when almost all ad SDKs, including Playhaven, for example, already include Analytics as a component? You want to take that one? Um, so just to recap, it's why use the GA SDK? Yeah. Why use the Analytics Mobile SDK from Google if other ad SDKs also already include Analytics components? Oh, that's a good point. So if I, if I think if I understand it right, um, I think one of the nice things about the GA SDK, um, especially what we have in terms of um, campaign attribution, we're not 
our, our goal is kind of to sit at the middle of a lot of different marketing channels and efforts. And so we're, we're not trying to be, um, we, we do try to give like specific, I think, valuable reports for um, Google paid um, marketing when, when we can. But the, our goal is to be a little bit more agnostic. So um, with GA, you, you get a platform that can really plug into all these different marketing channels, uh, irrespective of what ad networks you're using. Um, and to give you that all in one place, along with all the rich features like uh, segmentation and, and everything else that you get from GA. I don't know, Jim, if you had anything else. Yeah, I was going to say, that, uh, just to add to that, the SDKs themselves uh, are uh, are designed so that uh, you know any sort of attribution that you have access to as an app uh, developer, you can pass through uh, to the GA reporting uh, uh, framework. Uh, just just like that Google Play uh, sources report you saw before, yeah. uh, it's not limited to that. So um, you can certainly uh, Pass attribution through our, uh, you know, through the SDK, and we'll, we'll keep track of it for you. So, I might add one more thing too: is that if you're already doing, um, a lot of people are already using GA for web tracking, um, and if you're already familiar with good point. sort of the interface, how it yeah. works, maybe you're using the core reporting API. Um, in that sense, it, it's very easy to then kind of loop in the app tracking component of GA and just get up and running with that much more quickly. Um, in addition to everything that, that Jim mentioned as well. So Eduardo has a question. He was asking how the SDK and Universal Analytics new features relate. The SDK is built on top of uh, Universal Analytics, so it, it uh, uses most of, or if not all, of the features that the uh, UA currently has available, including, I guess we never did talk about custom dimensions and metrics. Right. Um, the SDK also has those available, uh, and social user timings. Uh, and the nice thing about UA from um, kind of like a good citizen point of view is that uh, less data is being sent with each we, with each hit, and then the, the V2 SDKs uh, follow that same thing. They send less data with each, each hit as a result. And one add-on to that, we, we didn't talk about custom dimensions uh, and metrics specifically. I think we could do a whole GDL on that, or maybe two. Um, but there is a, a yeah. big comprehensive guide available at developers.google.com uh, slash analytics if you want to take a look and learn more about uh, custom dimension men and metrics. Yeah. Um, so maybe we'll switch to the uh, moderator here. Um, Let's take a look. So the first question uh, from Jason, our hybrid e-commerce app jumps between native app pages and mobile web pages. Um, so what best practices do we use to, uh, one, have seamless end-to-end -end visitor data, and two, not double count when looking at our mobile web page stats via GA? Yeah, so I, I don't think we have a good answer for you on that right now, but that is uh, something we're looking very hard at. at uh, so uh, if I get this right, uh, when you say mobile web pages, so you'll have your analytics tracking code on those website pages as well. So that'll look like two different uh, two different uh, um, visitors in that sense. If you're uh, going, if you're using the same tracking ID for both uh, web and app. Uh, one, one other note is, you know, we talked about this concept of these app reports and and. Um, the app reports uh, are only viewable for uh, only exist for for um, uh, profiles that uh, have app tracking enabled, and they they only f get data from the 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 mobile app SDKs, whereas the web reports uh, will view only data from the web uh, from the web tracking. Right. So web data goes to web profiles, and app yeah. data to app. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think we have some ideas for that. Um, I would say, Jason, I, informally, I, I've seen this work um, when you use, when you're showing your web content in the context of a web view within, for example, like an Android app. Um, I think there are ways, um, and I'm hoping to talk to Jim about that, or maybe publish okay. something later, to actually have the, um, the activity on that page that's being shown in the web view uh, be tracked as actually native, so you can keep it in one session. Um, but um, more on that later. I think that's still something we're looking into. Um, okay. Uh, I want to jump down to a question about migration um, because I know I've heard this one a couple times. The um, yeah. question is, is there any way to migrate the data uh, from the old web profile? Um, they were using SDK v1 with an old web profile to these new app profiles that we just talked about. I, the short answer is no, unfortunately. However, um, 
It's something we know a lot of people want to do. Uh, a lot of people are using the V1 SDK. So again, this is something that uh, we're looking at, and uh, hopefully we'll have a answer for you before too much longer. So today, probably the best way, I mean, you have to create a new profile. and then Well, you would have to, because right. your old SDK is actually reporting against the web profile, right, and right. your new SDK is reporting against the app profile. Yeah. What do you think about like sort of dual tagging an app? I've heard some developers do that, where they have V1 and V2 to try to reporting at the same time to different profiles to try to ease the transition. Yeah, uh, um, that's certainly a reasonable, reasonable thing to do, uh, certainly in the short term. Um, so you won't be able to see your data um, together, but you'll be able to compare it kind of side right, by side. Right. Yeah. Cool. cool. Though, though I wouldn't recommend that long term, because you're doubling up the, the traffic load. True. It's more yeah, overhead, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, Great. Another question, um, this is one that's definitely come up before. Uh, what's the best way to track in-app purchases? Uh, uh, so the best way to track in-app purchases is to um, send your beacons when, the when you get confirmation that the purchase has, uh, ha has been like authorized or, or confirmed or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you might have to pass. Uh, the data in terms of the transaction and, and, and all the, the the amounts and whatnot, and then all the line items uh, through, and you can do that, I think, with Android pretty easily. I'm not as familiar with iOS, but uh, the key point is is you want to wait until you get a confirmation, um, and then send, and then at that point you can um, send the beacons, and that that might be a good use case where you can send right away because you know you have an internet connection. Um, mm, that's a good point. And um, yeah, getting getting From data out was is nice. So. With manual dispatch, right? Yeah, with yeah, manual so. dispatch, that's correct. Yeah. And I should say, I think the, I mean, the certainly the e-commerce framework that we have in the SDKs is is pretty flexible. Um, it's that's really right. probably a question of determining when the transaction's been confirmed and then right. sending at that point. Yeah, and I, that's your key time to send it. And the other nice thing about the, the SDKs, the V2 SDKs, we made it a lot easier to send a transaction. It's just one call instead yeah. of yeah. many calls like we had before. So That's true. Also documented on uh, developer sites, so check it out. Um, but do also check out the iOS documentation for their in-app billing. Um, and I believe Google Play has similar documentation. I think that's one of the things um, we'd like to do is maybe publish some samples to make this a little bit easier for people. So keep an eye out for that, too. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, let's go to. Um, someone says I, I read somewhere that the new reports would include how many users opened your app after download, um, but I couldn't identify that in the reports. Does that exist? Uh, yeah, that's the new visitors. So when you, um, the new visitors, or uh, I guess the new users. Um, Wherever you see new visitors, new users, what that indicates is that someone, that many people opened up the app for the very first time uh, during that reporting period. So I think that's kind of what you're looking for there. So if you were to look at a report and you said, I have you know, 50 new users over the past week, it means 50 people ran the app for the first time during that yeah, week. Is that that's right? correct. That's okay. correct. Yeah. So I think that's, let's see, I think that should be it. So look out for the new users metric. Um, and that's different, actually, from active users. Basically. Right. Active users is how many how many different people open the app at least once during that reporting period. Right. right. So. Cool. Great. Well, I think um, that's about all we've got time for today. Um, but thank you, Jim, again oh, for joining thanks. us. Thanks, Andrew. Really appreciate it. Um, I've got some closing messages here. Um, yeah, just a reminder, uh, another plug to go to developers.google.com slash analytics. Um, we've got a lot of documentation about the new Android SDKs, uh, the new iOS SDKs. Um, so check it out, uh, read through it, and hopefully you can get started um, tracking in your app uh, very soon. Um, definitely, we're going to look forward to bringing you more Google Developer Live uh, events from Google Analytics, including some more uh, behind the code episodes. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, uh, do make sure to follow us on Google+. Um, and if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to post them to the uh, YouTube page, um, or catch us on Google+, I guess. Cool. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, see you next time.